ahead and get started. Yeah, we'll go ahead and get started. Welcome to the Disney Plus panel, which is all your news and information for Disney Plus. I'll just start with something I was reading earlier today. Um, Disney has pushed back Black Widow and Mulan indefinitely as of today. Oh. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. That's, uh, uh, they've pushed them both back indefinitely. Warner Brothers has pushed one, uh, Wonder Woman back again to another release date. But uh, the way I understand that the assessments are going is Disney is assessing on a weekly basis. Warner Brothers is assessing uh, release date on a bi-weekly basis. Every two weeks, uh, the directors and the key producer and the uh, team come together with the CEO to decide what are we going to do? How are we going to release this? How are we going to get it out to, th uh, to theaters? The big rumor, and this is the rumor aspect, what I just said was fact, it's, it's out there on the newswire. This is the rumor aspect. The rumor aspect is that Disney is oh, looking yeah, hey into, is um, into setting up. Name up there. Uh, Disney um, is looking into setting up some sort of additional situation for Disney Plus where you'll be able to view uh, Mulan and um, uh, Black Widow for an extra fee. And if, uh, if not for an extra fee, they were actually doing a research where they hired a guy and he's saying that they could, they could top a few hundred million additional subscribers by simply slapping both of them onto Disney Plus at no extra charge. So that's in the pipeline right there. Albert, you and I have talked about this extensively, this in uh, relation to uh, the, other, the other movies that are getting pushed back. Whereas I had said, Wonder Brothers has pushed Wonder Woman back again today. Uh, Wonder Brothers CEO is open to the idea of Wonder Woman streaming, going to video demand, but said definitely not on Tenet which you said before that Nolan probably has it in the contract. Yeah, I, I'd imagine Nolan eggs. and see in uh, Quentin Tarantino has contracts set up like this where their movie yeah. has to film certain ways or be uh -huh. shown certain ways. So there's no way Nolan doesn't have the same deal because he was always doing IMAX stuff and everything for all of his movies. Yeah. So I guarantee you all that's already in the contract. They have to release that thing in theaters. Yeah. Okay. On Tenet and all, but Disney, there's nothing stopping from Disney either saying, look, Disney Plus subscribers, uh, exclusively for two months before we release it to other video on demand services, you could pay $20 to watch Black Widow or $20 to watch Mulan. Is uh, Disney Plus available in China? You see, that's the question. That's the question. That was the first thing I thought right there. It's not just the theaters that's holding up Mulan here. If the theaters were fully open in China, they would have already gone ahead and uh, at least done a Chinese release. But no, there are no, not only are there no theaters open in China or the majority of theaters in China are closed, China is facing a horrible situation with the dam over there right now. Mm -hmm. And that's not, yeah, I, I, you don't see that much on the news, but they've been quietly relocating, what, millions of people. Yeah, and that dam's about to break. So there's multiple problems going on right there. I think it would behoove Disney. I think they're. I think the uh, business guy. I say business guy. He's got all sorts of credentials to his name. He's not that hard. Just Google Disney Plus. Uh, but I, I think he's right. This could add. This could add a, a substantial number to subscriber base if they did not charge more and just released Mulan and Black Widow to Disney Plus. That's what I was honestly hoping they would do with the Rise of Skywalker. Yeah. Because I, I'm, I'm sure I'm in the minority, but I have never been a huge fan of going to the movies. Yeah. Like, I could take it or leave it, but I, Star Wars are ones that I do go see in the theaters. But I was really hoping that because Disney Plus was already out when the Rise of Skywalker opened, that it would be one that you could just pay an extra fee or you know because i would pay movie theater prices to be able to like pause it rewind watch it a couple of times you know within like 48 hours or 72 hours yeah. um so i personally hope that they put mulan just straight to streaming like 
Yeah, I, I'd like to. I'd like to see that as well. But they have to find some sort of two hundred million, mm -hmm. two hundred million in Mulan, straightforward standard reshoots, no additional reshoots. Which means, damn, they nailed it. They're happy with it, and they're ready to. You know, and they're ready to move forward with this. But they need to in the future. This may releasing it on Disney Plus may work out in number of subscriberships that comes aboard for this movie and possibly Black Widow as well, but they need to find a structure that pays for $200 million movies in the future through releasing it in, uh, in streaming. And I can't help but feel that the way they filmed The Mandalorian uh, with that new technology where they didn't have to go on location or anywhere and it's all completely looks real, you can't tell CGI from anything else on it, uh, I can't help but feel that they're going to be looking into that sort of aspect from now on on these big big budget films. But uh, I mean, Disney uh, Disney Plus has more than been worth it. Uh, oh, yeah. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, I absolutely there's think so. There's a lot of content there, and there's, there's there's good content in their main thing. So, well, yeah, the Hamilton thing by itself. I I mean, just yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> right right out of the gate the timing on that was perfect mm -hmm. uh and it, i i'd love to see more of that i would love to see um the disney broadway shows yes. done in a similar fashion yes yeah that and put awesome. up on there and as well as i i want more i want their entire classics library i know they keep teasing us by dropping like four or five albert did you notice you finally got your goofies on there Oh no, I haven't noticed that yet. Yeah, yeah, no the the goofies, how to ski, how to That's swim, good. how to do. Really good. Yeah, they're they're popping up two, three at a time as well. And I want the Disney, you know, Walt Disney presents Disneyland. They've got four or five of their Werner von Braun, the head Nazi scientist that we brought over under Operation Paperclip to further our space program. He's on two of the Disneyland specials. And they don't go into, you know, this is former Nazi scientist, Werner Braun. It's just Werner von Braun, the man behind America's space effort. And he stands there with a stick pointing at things. This is what we do with this. And, that. and it's just, it's so surreal. You watch Werner von Braun basically standing there with the model of the space shuttle in 1956 saying, and this is how the engines will release it. It will go into the air and... Uh, and it, I mean, because at the time in 1957, nobody knew. He was just a scientist with a crazy, with an accent. He was the man that was going to eventually put us into space and the moon, which he did. But, you know, we didn't go into details about where we found him. <laughs> it, it's just uh, the content that they're already putting on there is extraordinary. Their original stuff as well. Uh, Kristen, what do you think about Pixar in everyday life? I don't know what that is. Oh, you don't know? It's like, uh, <clears throat> if you send Joe Crow the link, he'll join us too. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. If, uh, Pixar in everyday life is where stuff from Pixar movies happen to unsuspecting people. Like at one point, the emotion board from Inside Out just appeared in a park. And... Uh, Von Alan Pinion said Von Braun is featured a lot at the Huntsville Space and Rocket. Yes, he he's got, is. He's got his own thing down there. <laughs> yes, he does. Uh, well, I mean, this is where he was centered for the most yeah. part until they moved him to Houston. Uh, but uh, uh, Wally, -E, the what they took out that seven hundred pound Wally -E robot and had him hidden in a pile of trash on the side of the uh, on the sidewalk, and somebody would throw something away and he'd come out, pick it up, do something, and move along. They had a little boy that looked like uh, Dash from The Incredibles. Uh, you know, say, could you time me? I'm I'm trying to see how fast I can run around this entire city block. And of course, people will stop and say, well, okay, sure, kid. And they'll hit the timer and he'll run around one corner and then his twin runs around the other. <laughs> yeah, I mean, stuff like that is awesome. And the Imagine, did you watch the Imagineering series? Oh, you haven't watched the Imagineering series? No. Albert's I, personal. Huh? I, I, 
I haven't watched a lot of it. That's why I was like, why am I on this panel? <laughs> well, you, you've got a child. So I that, do. That's, I have you, a very you young a child. child. That's right. Yes. So that's forgivable and all. Albert, have you seen any of the Imagineering series? No, my, my Disney Plus is uh, usually, my TV is taken over by my nieces when they're here. So they just watch the Disney live action shows constantly and annoy, and annoy me to death with it all. <laughs> and YouTube, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. The, uh, 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 the Imagineering panel goes into day-to-day -day process of how Disney builds what it builds in Disney World and around the world, how they handle the different things like from the aqueducts to the robotics to the uh, movers and the ideas. And it, it's just, it's truly inspirational. You watch these things and you watch the effort that these men and women go through in uh, giving, giving birth to these creations. It's just a wonderful original series and they're going to do more and more along those lines. And, and aside from their mainstream content, that's the stuff I'm really, I, I really, really and truly enjoy is the behind the scenes stuff. I used to love it when Walt would come on TV mm -hmm. and hold, you know, say, we're building a city. It's the experimental prototype community of tomorrow. And of course, we turned the city into a theme park because he passed away and nobody knew how to do it other than him. So, uh, but he had, yeah, he owned the Orlando airport. That was part of Epcot. That was, uh, yeah, the, what was initially the Orlando airport was uh, going to be part of Epcot. Actual people were going to live inside the city. And if you've never seen the actual model for Epcot, the original Walt Disney model, Google it, YouTube it, and it's also on Disney Plus as well under one of the Disneyland series. And they've also got the original Mickey Mouse Club there as well. I'm, I'm talking about the Annette Fun uh, Funicello. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, the Annette Funicello with Fred and Ted and all the Mouseketeers. And it's... you. You know Disney is innovative, but you don't know how innovative they truly are until you do things like watch the first episode of the Mickey Mouse Club, which I think aired in 1953. I mean, the World War II had just happened. Yeah, yeah, it was still fresh in everybody's memory, memories. And the first thing the Mickey Mouse Club does is it goes to Japan to show uh, all the Japanese children who are Mickey Mouse Club members at a swim meet as such. And I mean, that's, you, you think it sounds like nothing now, but it was everything then. And it, it's, it's wonderful uh, things that they do like that and put on, they, they are really, really providing with, uh, providing us with content that Netflix is unable to, that HBO Max is unable to, because they weren't there, you know, just simply put. Uh, Disney was. And of course, you got your documentaries like Walt and El Grupo, where um, Roosevelt sent him to Central America to try to sway them away from the Nazis and over to the Allies side. And, uh, and, and just every movie you could possibly want. You can watch, you know, you can, you can cry multiple times in a night. Uh, just earlier, my, uh, uh, we had Up on the TV you know, the, uh, the first 15 minutes of it just kills you, just absolutely kills. Um, so this is just, I, I'm thrilled to death with the content on it. And at the same time, I'm wanting more. Now, y'all have seen the original program, The Mandalorian. I know Albert has. Yeah. Kristen? <laughs> what are you doing with your Disney Plus subscription? <laughs> So we've watched 101 Dalmatians approximately 101 times. Oh, we're in that phase, are we? Yes, we very much like dogs. Oh. Um, so we've done that. We've done Lady and the Tramp. We have done some Bluey. Uh -huh. um, she loves Puppy Dog Pals. Uh -huh. Moana. Uh -huh. Frozen. Hey, did you catch the joke in Moana about the chicken and the rocks? You know, for the, the what's the name of the chicken? Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Mm -hmm. Okay, where hey, hey is constantly trying to eat a rock mm -hmm. you know, on the island, and then later 
she uh, uh, grabs uh, Maui's finger and is trying to eat his finger. Mm -hmm. And who plays Maui? The Rock. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't get that. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Um, um, they've got wonderful, outstanding new programming like The Mandalorian on it. And of course, we've got The Mandalorian Season 2 and Clone Wars, uh -huh. which we talked about in the Star Wars Clone Wars panel. Clone Wars is one is, if not the, it's one of the highest rated streaming television shows to hit in 2020. I'm I mean, it, it just put, yeah, it just put everything else to shame even gave Mandalorian a run for its money, but Mandalorian's counted as 2019, and it was the dominating factor for the uh, streaming shows then. Albert, typically, what do you what do you find yourself watching the most of on it? Uh, beyond like something like Mandalorian and Clone Wars, I've watched pretty much all the Disney movies, uh, or the main ones at least, the main animated ones. The, yeah. You know, just you know, the animated ones, not all the live action stuff, Pixar stuff. And just assorted cartoon shorts. Oh, I, I, I love the cartoon shorts, but I love the uh, classically animated movies as well. And the fact, uh, did you notice, we talked about this briefly on the podcast, has the Fox movies, uh, has their rights, are coming home to roost and away from syndication and all, they put The Princess Bride on Disney+. Plus. Uh, they, they're putting the X-Men movies one at a time as the syndication rights expire onto Disney+. Plus. And what's more is they're not editing the Disney movies. Now, they edited Hamilton yeah. by removing two F-bombs out of it, but uh, they're not editing. It, it, the, the stance seems to be now that they're not going to edit anymore going forward. And the reason I say that is because Wolverine is just, his bare butt is everywhere in uh, Days of Future Past, as well as the cussing and everything. It's all there. And they didn't bother to alter it in the least little bit. Mm -hmm. I mean, they put their disclaimers in front of it, but that's about the, that's about the extent of it. So, oh, I mean, you can like really lock it down mm -hmm. with the parental controls and stuff. I mean, we have Abby, her own, channel or whatever and Moana does not show up on it because it is PG ah. which you know took Sorry. us like forever to realize we were like oh my god Moana's not even on Disney Plus no it is but it's PG so it doesn't show up for like the young kids what could have gotten Moana PG right I, that, that kind of mystifies me sometimes what gets a uh, what gets a G, what gets a PG, and uh, PG-13, you can usually tell yeah. you know, what, what the difference is. Now, there's talk that, uh, there's talk that, like Deadpool, which is now a Disney property, uh, there's talk that Deadpool will either go to Hulu, or they could actually come up with an entirely new section of Disney Plus to deal with it. But they could also put uh, the re-edited Deadpool, Once Upon a Deadpool, where they took Deadpool 2 and edited it down to make it a PG-13 film. I'll be right back. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Uh, edited it down to make it a PG-13 film with, um, hey, Joe. Hello. Welcome, Joe Crow. He's joining us a little late, but I asked him a little late, so there we go. Uh, they're also talking about putting Once Upon a Deadpool uh, on Disney Plus before Christmas. And I just don't know how that'll go because I was uncomfortable playing Once Upon a Deadpool in the store. You remember that, Albert? With Fred Savage? Yeah, yeah I remember. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he ties that. Fred Savage to the bed to do a princess bed to yeah. do a Princess Bride ripoff. And yeah, it, and, and hilarity ensues. Joe, did your screen just freeze? There we go. Okay. Yep. <laughs> okay. So, Joe, we were just talking about Disney Plus, and uh, uh, we talked briefly about Milan, the situation that came out today that Milan and Black Widow has been delayed by Disney indefinitely. They're not assigning release dates to it. Warner Brothers uh, has pushed Wonder Woman's opening back further uh, and has confirmed that Tenet will be released in theaters. And we think that's because of a contractual obligation between Nolan and Warner Brothers. 
Uh, but sure. uh, yeah, so what, what would be your take on it? Do you think it'd be a wise move? There's a business manager out there uh, that is suggesting that Disney could gain 100 million more subscribers simply by putting Black Widow and Mulan onto Disney Plus without charging anything extra. <clears throat> Pardon me. I feel like, and I always have, there's something about the theatrical experience, mm -hmm. about seeing it first then, and then paying, and th what they want you to do is to see it one time then, and then pay again later mm -hmm. to see it whenever you want to. But since, you know, Apocalypse we can't <laughs> we we can't go and do that. So um, it depends on how creative. You got to look at you know part of it has to you have to look at creatively. How far back do they want to push the Marvel Universe's plans because they can't show us Black Widow? Well, Marvel Universe's plans are going forward because the Falcon and uh, Winter Soldier. Yeah, Wanda. I mean, they're all on schedule. As a matter of fact, Disney moved their schedules up, and pre-production. I understand that pre-production is running heavy with uh, Moon Knight and a couple of the other Ooh. Disney Plus shows. I want all of it yeah. right now. I f I feel like with Di Disney Plus has been super neat, yeah. and I I want Mulan and Black Widow today, <laughs> but yeah. I hmm. I don't know. I mean, it, it's a it's a financial it's, it's thing. A, they may get away with it on Milan now with it, with this situation, but they've got to find a way to pay for these two hundred million dollar movies. Yeah, yeah. And it is video on demand? Is the streaming service going to be able to pull that off? They, they're, they're looking at several different ways. We're going to, even after, if, if there's a cure for COVID found tomorrow, there's not going to be. But if there is, and by December, COVID's pretty much handled, and it, there's not, it's not going to be. But let's pretend we're facing a full 2021 without tentpole movies, uh, or anything else yeah, going forward because nothing's in production right now. They're just mm -hmm. very cautiously going back into production on uh, some of the TV so series and such where they're much more controlled environments. Yeah. I feel like they, so, oh, you know, I didn't really even make that connection until you said that. That's why they're moving back these things they're already finished with. Mm-hmm so that they can go big with something they've already gotten done. Yeah. But, but at the same time, if you can't go into the theater to see Wonder Woman 1984 or Black Widow, then what are you going to do? Uh, how, how do you... I... Now, let me, uh, let me ask this, and you, you might know this. Do they hold back the merchandise? Oh. Uh before they if they're not going to release wonder woman or black widow do does target and walmart and everywhere else do they not get the action figures uh lego has already put them on the shelves see yeah see, that varies because i because remember because i remember when the that last gi joe movie came out with the rock they delayed that movie a year at the last minute <laughs> and like certain stores had toys and and then they just cut the toys off and held them on, held on, I guess held them in a warehouse for a year. I don't, because they, because even if the movies aren't there, they still got to do something. Yeah. yeah they got to put that stuff somewhere. Well, the t-shirts are out there. The, uh, uh, the Lego figures are out there. Straightforward, speaking straightforward, Lego's the only toy that's making a profit hand over sure. fist. I mean, the, the action figures are uh, pr predominantly made for uh, the older crowd now. Kids today aren't picking them up, but it's the video games and the, um, it's the video games and Legos that are making the most headway. But the, and, uh, yeah, but on Legos, isn't that mostly due to just the insane markup they all have based on how much it costs to make it? 
Uh, no, so Legos. Why are we arguing about this? <laughs> that that's an entirely another panel. But the way Legos work is Legos has price market values for like if you're three year old, four year old, ten year old, twelve year old want to get into it, it's affordable. And then when you you know if you're a collector, that's when the prices start hiking up. But also, the merchandising, they, huh? They, they mix cocaine into the Lego plastic, so that's you right. can't you can't stop getting them. Well, they had to. They had to find something to replace the dolphin once they went dolphin fish. <laughs> <So, yeah. laughs> but uh, yeah, but that's it. I mean, it, it's uh, the older crowd is the ones they sucker into the bigger money ones, and from Marie to everybody. And Lego is the best. I don't doubt Joe, because I'm upset. Yeah, yeah. I mean, absolutely. But uh, you, you've got a you've got a format here with Disney Plus that. I, I've, I've said it several times on the podcast, going forward, the entertainment industry is going to have to find some new way. They're going to have to come to some happy medium where they can afford to give the quality that people have come to expect, but it not cost the 200 million that Mulan did so they can easier make it back on their streaming services. Yeah, now Frozen 2 came out Oh, before God, yeah. the apocalypse yeah but then it released early onto uh like it don't it don't it didn't how long had it, had it been out in the public before the pandemic hit frozen two uh, though, right? yeah frozen two had released in november of 2019 oh okay 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 i uh, i believe i'm so, right on that. yeah so it had made its theatrical money so they weren't same thing with episode nine and they released episode nine early on Disney plus as well. Yeah. yeah but it the, had been in, th it had a uh -huh. little time in theaters before then. Okay. Yeah. And uh, again, the, the thing like the DVD market where people buy collections and all that's the money that it makes there is again from the older people who remember a time who, you know, who, who know that streaming and the things you get video by on video on demand, it can go away and you'd like to have some way of watching it. So, yeah. you know, you can figure out how to use a DVD player or Blu-ray player and uh, play your discs on. But like, you know, I have to have a copy of all the Star Wars. Mm -hmm. and, and that's just not the situation anymore. Uh, if people want to watch it, they simply rent it on video on demand. And uh, this, is, this is the most viable format going forward. It just comes down to cost efficient. You know, what, what is cost efficient? And I've got to tell you, Joe, Albert, if they're turning out stuff, the quality of the Mandalorian uh, or, you know, the uh, Imagineering documentaries and such, if they're turning those out, I'm very entertained by that. I was as entertained by the Mandalorian as I am any movie. I was thrilled to death with all the rumors of Obi-Wan has a movie. I was thrilled to death to learn that they wanted it as a series for Disney plus mm -hmm. because as opposed to two hours of, you know, spending time with this character, Obi-Wan with Ewan McGregor. Now you're going to have eight hours. Of exactly. It. The Mandalorian was one long movie. Yeah. And that is the most, Outside of movies, that is the most live-action Star Wars we've gotten since the Ewok movies back in the eighties. Oh, you mean without the CGI? Or yeah, like yeah. But you see these, and they've got us psyched up. I'm very psyched up for Wandavision. Oh yeah. I mean, this is going to be a trip and a half. But the problem that I think they're running into, and again, Albert, we discussed this the other night. Uh, the problem I think they're running into with it is that WandaVision was on schedule to once WandaVision finished, here's Doctor Strange 2. And that's not going to happen now. We're not even, we're, we're in pre-production on Doctor Strange 2. So unless they can shoot a movie in six months, hmm, not going to happen. Doctor Strange 2 is going to get delayed. Everything's been delayed by this. You, uh, I mean, if the, the, they can figure out how to make it safe enough, I hope. I, I don't know. Um, but you, you, 
my, my fear is that at some point money is going to trump safety. Well, I mean, I guess it always it already has throughout has. all of history. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that's already happening right now. Uh, yeah. The, the money and who we consider essential employees. Yeah. Uh, suddenly a McDonald's server is an essential employee. They sure. didn't know it, but you know, boom. And that's, that's very unfair to ask them, you know, the sort of risk we're putting them at. But like today, I went out to the post office today to drop stuff off. It's all seems back to normal, but it's not. It's not really there. It's not really back to normal. Well, the I problem don't... with the, the movie theater aspect of it is, and this, this has happened to me, and this happened to anyone who, who's ever went to movies on a regular basis. You know, you go to a movie and you have like a bad experience and, and, and you're done with movies for a couple of months, probably, mm -hmm. you know, especially in the off season or something like you're just like, hey, I don't, I don't need to watch that movie because I didn't enjoy it the last time. If, yeah. you go, if you try to open theaters now and you have to do things, you know, to make it as safe as possible for people, which involves masks, it involves social distancing, staying apart in lines, being all spread out in the theater, who knows what else that have to do in the theater. People are just going to go one time and then like, they're like, then they're going to be like, well, I'm done. I'm not going back to like, like Ugh, I hate this. I'm, I'm gonna done with that. So. My living room. Well, well, they, the could, most, they could open up and do that now, but 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 you would lose so much, so many people as customers for at least at a very extended period of time. It would what 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 the point would be would be for opening just to do that. Well, okay, the example here, and I, I I doubt that you two. I know Albert doesn't, but I doubt that you watch this show. Is the Disney parks reopening? Disney was the first to close in America, and Disney was the last to reopen. But every headline you see is about Disney opened. Well, never mind that Universal was open a month beforehand or SeaWorld and the rest yeah. of them. But uh, Disney has it set up. If you watch the, um, we follow a guy named Tim Tracker on YouTube. And he's, uh, he's pretty good about the Disney parks. He's pretty fair and all and straightforward. But if you're watching what all they put into place, they've taken extraordinary cautions. They've gone out of their way and they've made it as safe as I believe safe could be. But at the same time, the responsibility for contracting COVID, if you enter any of these parks, is on you. Yeah. And I mean, rightfully so at this point. Nobody's down there. I mean, just absolutely positively, there's um, uh, the Millennium Falcon ride, Smuggler's Run. That ride is usually at the minimum a 90 minute wait. Right now, it's 20 minutes, 15 right. minutes. Hot dang, it, now's the time it, to go. Except which means for... you, Yeah, which means you can walk on to it. The <laughs> uh, Avatar ride, same thing with it. The Avatar ride is an overly excessive rate. Uh, Flights of Fantasy, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. And uh, uh, they've uh, very sparse, uh, very sparse sure. visitors in the park. Well, they put out that opening video and then had to take it down. What I missed that. What was that? So it was a video about how they were opening Disney World and everything. Yeah. And it was just, I mean, it's a glorified commercial. And the whole video was just, you know, employees saying like, welcome home or whatever. Yeah. But they all had masks on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, they, that quickly got re-edited where people just stuck horror music up. Harmony no, music. that was from Albert. I was just going to say that that was from the stand that many. Well, they did. They did every everything you could think of, yeah. whether it was Halloween music or whatever. And Disney was like, "Okay, fine, you know, best, we get it. Maybe Two, not yeah. the best because it cause really, it's not that there's anything necessarily wrong with the with the with the actual commercial. It just seems like maybe you shouldn't have put that out. But yeah, well, like, okay, and they just took it down. But the, all the horror. All the other ed the edits of it, I mean, they're still up it there. It seemed a little too easy. Yeah. It was yeah. kind of like a softball. They're like, to, to be fair, if you've never been, if you never stayed at Disney World, when you come back to the hotel in the evening and when you check in, they tell you welcome home. Yeah, but if you're staying cool. on, yeah, if you're staying I mean, on Disney property, I mean, the, for the most part, that video is harmless. It's just that as you watch, it, this, like, everyone's really, yeah. they're they're all masked up and everything. Well, here's the thing: I watched a that parody video before I watched the actual video. 
and now I can't. Like I watched like the the one that with the with uh, edited together with the scenes from the stand, and don't fear the reaper playing over it. So now that's all I see when I see the little happy Disney World Welcome reopening. Home. So I'm 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 ruined. It ruined ruined it for me. <laughs> Well, I mean, it, it's it's going to be the same thing with theaters. There's no successful that they're not going to put up a piece of plastic between every seat. And Albert, with everything else you listed about all the other factors that go into it, the social distancing, the wearing the masks and all, the other big situation is personal responsibility. And we've seen that that's not flying real well in certain areas. Yeah. There's, there's look at, at least it like this, you know, we can, you know, they talk about Disney opening the parks and everything, but I mean, Florida's just Mad Max world down there. <laughs> just do what you want to. Nobody cares. Sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and it, the beaches are open. Everything's up. Well, everything's open here, too. We just recently required a mask uh, across the state. And like you had said, Albert, that's predominantly because Walmart mandated it. Yeah. Um yeah, the corporations are now making the decision. But back to the Disney, uh, back to talking about Disney Plus in relation to all of this, I think that this is where, I think the WandaVision and uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier and Mandalorian and all of these shows, I think this is where we're headed. Yeah, I feel like maybe I, I think the disney plus shows like wandavision and, Win and winter soldier and falcon are i think i think they are going to benefit in a way from this because now these shows are going to be out there for a select few and then you can make them more available later on like i feel like you do a second run with these shows on abc tv yeah and that way, way those of us who already are obsessed with Disney Plus are like, oh, we saw that three months ago. You well, know. Now, this is interesting. Joe, you've, it's, it's an uber media nerd level that you have to be to really notice these things. But you've noticed that over the past four years that uh, local, our local stations, uh, Channel 6 mm -hmm. and uh, Channel 42 and Channel 13, you know they've all reverted to their call letters. They're no longer Fox 6, they're WBRC. They're no uh, longer, you know, they're no longer NBC 13, they're WVTM mm -hmm. again, which we hadn't seen since, you know, the late, the mid 80s. Yeah. You know, when they started you know, Fox 6 and uh, NBC 13 and all of this. Well, the reason why is because they know a time's coming when ABC is not going to be there to be affiliated with. Mm. And then it becomes a free-for-all. Or if you watch, if you look on YouTube now, what you've got is uh, the local streaming news. So then it becomes to who controls what territory by way of news. Yeah, most of my local, because, my, in reality, most of the local news I get is actually through Facebook because a lot of the stuff that, that happened, if anything big happens around town, it's just here we are live on this scene right here and now. Yeah. You know, that, yeah that's, that's the way it is. That's exactly right. So the, you know, so ABC, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say that modern family is going to be remembered has probably the last exceptionally, um, uh, exceptionally lauded sitcom on standard broadcast television. I'm, I'm going to go that far. I'm going to say that your next friends, your next cheers, your next whatever is going to come across Disney Plus or, or Netflix or HBO Max. Yeah. And, and I got to tell you, it's uh, my wife and I, we made a decision about a, uh, a year or two ago when, well, right before Disney Plus went on the air, we saved right at $3,000 by getting rid of cable, just internet. And we have not missed a thing except commercials. Yeah. And, and that's with us subscribing to Disney plus HBO max, uh, Hulu and CBS. And, uh, uh, Peacock just started, but Peacock is free and not quite sure what they're doing currently. 
uh, they're kind of chasing their own tail there. But um, I mean, for the value you get, we, we, uh, we had a D23 offer, the Disney Club offer, where you could sign up for three years of Disney Plus, and basically you're paying for like a year and a half uh, before Disney Plus went on there. And so we, without hesitation, of course, I'm saying this behind me, there's Mickey Mouse statues and, you know, Ooh. Disney books. And, so I'm drinking the you Kool-Aid. would have done it anyway. Yeah, I, I mean, they, they could have said, you know, sign your firstborn over and I'll go. <laughs> yeah <laughs> and <laughs> well worth it here would you like me to mail her to you uh <laughs> so but uh it, it's it's that sort of thing we're much more value in it than say standard cable or satellite services mm-hmm. and i cannot tell you how much nicer it is even though hulu has the commercials in it you're not constantly inundated like right. you are, you know, watching uh, streaming. So, and you have the choices. And I'm going to be remiss if I don't say something about Jeff Goldblum <laughs> with Disney Plus. Have y'all? I know Albert has. Albert, you've watched all of them, right? Oh, have they done more than one set of them? Yeah, they're just season one. But he signed for two more seasons. Yeah, I've, I've seen it. That's, that's okay. It, you're watching, have, Joe. Have you seen it? Yes. What's it called? It's called Jeff Goldblum. The World According to. Jeff yeah. Goldblum. And you're you're watching this. I oh my God, that, that barbecue one where he's in the middle of Podunk, Tennessee, which looks like it's the set of deliverance and all these good old boys with their beards and their, you know, biker outfits barbecuing. And this six foot four inch Jewish guy standing in the middle of what was it he said to him? He said something to him, and I thought, oh, my God, they're going to kill you. <laughs> and it's going to be shown live on Disney+. Plus. He, oh, he told her, he said, he was talking to the roughest one of them, was telling him, how do you really get the meat tender on this barbecue, and you got to watch this, this, this. And Jeff Goldblum stops him mid-sentence and says, you, you know, I... I, I look around you and your buddies here and I kind of hear the theme from Deliverance going off in my head. Oh. <laughs> and I thought, holy crap! <laughs> Why are the producers not stopping him? But I mean, that, that's the beauty of that show. You do not know what's coming out of that man's mouth. And, the, I, I have not been disappointed with really anything on Disney+. Plus. No, I haven't either. Any new stuff. The but uh, the, the 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 even the National Geographic section has veterinary shows and zoo shows that are in fact the rest of my family is not down here right now because they're up there watching um, the Columbus Zoo show on Disney Plus. Well, have you watched the Gordon Ramsay thing? My wife watches all the time where he goes to far off places in the world and and it, it's like well we got a fish and we got these leaves over here and now you're going to have to form a seven course dinner out of it yeah in, in the middle of the snowstorm and ramsey goes about it i mean yeah things i didn't even know existed on national Ge- geographic as well uh it, it's just uh, i i feel i get the most value for it i, I like hbo max and I think that has HBO Max pulls more things home and starts with uh, more of their new programming. Yeah. Uh, Green Lantern and such. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Or just anything. I mean, the, the Anna Kendrick, uh, the Anna Kendrick thing was cute. Uh, actually, it was very well done. It was almost too realistic on HBO Max. <laughs> I forget the name of it. But, um, uh, it, but for Disney, I can sit and browse Disney for hours and find things to go off of. Oh gosh, yeah. Um, the the whole Marvel section is stuff that I've had on VHS. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, is this is this my shelf in in my closet in, down in my basement? What 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 is happening? But Spider Woman, I've tried four times to get through three episodes of that, and I can't because I'm thinking I used to love this as a kid. Why, how did it get so well it's always been this bad but no, it's always been what it is it's you yeah. that changed Stan. <laughs> that's exactly right how dare i not like Sp- uh oh the spider-man and his amazing friends that was one of the oh. first things that i watched when disney plus went live mm-hmm. and i mean it, it was just so it, it, the characters 
It's very 80s. Yeah, very 80s. Very 80s. So, yeah, they confuse like Dr. Strange's powers and abilities with Professor Xavier's. They did. Yeah, yeah. he shows up and he's got Professor X's power set. But it, it really weird, it really weird stuff. And I was telling them earlier, the stuff that you may not be watching that you really do need to watch is anytime you see one of the old black and white Disney, Walt Disney presents Disneyland. Uh, or the uh, documentary about Walt and El Grupo, or uh, any of the Disney documentaries uh, concerning Walt and the uh, founding of Disney or any of the rest of them in world history. Disney has played a huge part in world history. Yeah. And you get a greater perspective from that, from watching the old black and white series that they are, the Mouseketeer show, I was telling them earlier, it, it was, it was highly innovative for its time and i cannot imagine how 1953 audiences coming out of world war ii would have reacted to some of the stuff they showed plus also you get to see abc the abc television networks cool broadcast logo which looks like they found it at hitler's garage sale <laughs> with this eagle and these lightning bolts nice. i mean you can you could take the abc logo and put it in, in one of the Nazi sets on Inglorious Bastards, and nobody would know the difference. <laughs> Good job. Good job, yeah. ABC. Yeah, I mean, now it's that friendly little circle with the small sure. letters and all this, but when you're watching the Mickey Mouse Club and this says, broadcast from ABC, you're like, uh, you know, oh my God, should I salute? Should I? <laughs> the A stands for Adolf. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, really, the design on that, and you're you're thinking well, that's a that's a little overboard even for that time period. But, but what uh, I I I like uh, the archive stuff, going back and looking at the because I've uh, when I was a kid on Wonderful World of Disney, I saw all of it, but now to get to see it again uh, with with the kiddo, you know, um, it's great. Like we've gone. Of course, we went through all the Marvel movies again, of course, and Natural. Star Wars also. But um, going deep into the Disney archives and seeing stuff that I haven't seen since I was seven, it's amazing. Yeah, no, it, it, it's spectacular. It really is. My number one complaint is I wish they would collect all of the Walt Disney Presents Disneyland. Mm -hmm. you know, now, that later became the wonderful world of Disney. But mm -hmm. I wish they would collect all of them and put them on there in seasons. I know they're just dropping you know, a few at a time. Yeah. Like uh, with the animated shorts, uh, Albert, uh, when it first went on, uh, when it first went live, Albert was like, where's all the goofy cartoons? There's like one goofy cartoon on there. And now there's like, I think they've got like six or seven of the goofy, you know, how-to cartoons placed on there. Uh, oh, but, you know, yeah. they're, yeah, they're just kind of dropping them casually and all. They got the new something that I found that I would have never necessarily watched on my own had it not been for Disney plus are the new animated Mickey mouse shorts. Those yeah. are really good. They, they did those a very are, good job with those. Uh, those are outstanding and very high end humor does not alter the characters any. No, and, it sort of yeah. is a, they're, they're like, they're like the Bugs Bunny shorts from year from the 70s yeah they're like the yeah uh, well the, the bugs bunny shorts which you know chuck uh, uh jones. Uh, yeah chuck jones and the crew did in the 40s and 50s right. which you know they played over and over to us with the shotguns and all you know back when nobody was paying attention to what was going on with the right. cartoons and and it was safe but yeah they really are they're reminiscent of that but they don't compromise in anything either. Exactly. It's, it's, they, yeah. I, I love that um, uh, we, we that, that that's the original format of Mickey, Donald, and Goofy. Yeah. And yeah. seeing that stuff again in, uh, in like new people doing that old thing. I'm yeah. all in for all that. Like the, uh, the new DuckTales show is good in a different way than the original. Yeah, it's really, really solid. No, it really is. They're doing a wonderful job with those. Well, another thing that I would like to see them kind of come to terms with to do live is like 
uh, part of my, uh, what my wife and I do on Christmas day is we have, you know, our breakfast, we open our presents and then we watch the uh, Disney Christmas parade on ABC. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd love to see them stream stuff like that live. That would be cool. Yeah. And it'd be great if they would stream some of the parties and stuff that right now are not going to take place at the park this year anymore for <laughs> obvious reasons, uh, because they would have already been shooting the Christmas special and they've canceled the Halloween uh, Universal and Disney has canceled all the Halloween parties and everything. Mm. But I would love to see them shoot a lot of that live and just, you know, do a special stream of it because they've got like Sarah Hyland from uh, Modern Family. They trot her out to host anything. Uh, they've got their standard crew of people that standing by to do any sort of uh, live action stream for ABC. They could do something similar on Disney Plus as well. Easy. Yeah. 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 And well, there needs uh, to be more synchronicity between ABC and Disney Plus. I'd like to see. Oh, I, I don't think it's going to be very much longer before you see an ABC option up there next to National Geographic, Star Wars, and Marvel. Perfect. That's because what I want. Where are you going to put Modern Family? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, you'd be, I, I, when it gets done being in syndication, it's got to go to Disney Plus, doesn't it? I think so. Yeah. You know, now there's a lot of people that I know one person in particular, no, 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 they couldn't put it. They'll have to put it on Hulu, but not really. I mean that that's that's content that's that because they got Simpsons on there, don't they? Well, that's exactly right. They've got the Simpsons. If you got the Simpsons on there, you'll put anything on there. Well, you know, right. no. At, at least the Simpsons aren't Seth MacFarlane. <laughs> <laughs> There's a stage below. <laughs> There's like look, but but yeah, the the Simpsons, I think is probably still in syndication. Oh, it gotcha. Is. But, but but it's also the maybe it's it's resting place now. <laughs> it's yes. on Disney Plus. Well, see, Sam's this, talking about Modern Family. In reality, when Simpsons is canceled or ends, that's the that's the real end of all that. You're exactly right. I wasn't that thinking is, that of that, the, but then the history the books right there. Yeah, when the with the Simpsons will bookend it. Uh, I mean, you know, hell, they've been on the air for thirty plus years now, and. Uh, yeah, The Simpsons will book in the uh, end of what I, uh, you know, your typical broadcast. It thing. may not even necessarily be the end of Simpsons. It just is, is the end of Simpsons on network television. On Fox. It may just well, be like, hey, once a year, we're going to do like six or seven Simpsons episodes and we're going to throw them on Disney+. Plus. Yeah. Don't hold me to this because I've read, I, I read a lot and sometimes it gets kind of jumbled up, but I'm fairly certain that all of the Planet of the Apes are coming to Disney+. Plus. Well, I am ready for that, and here yeah. is why, because that's one of the franchises that you can't easily get streaming. I actually, within the last few weeks, looked for Planet of the Apes, couldn't find mm -hmm. it anywhere. And so if it's coming, I'm ready. Well, it, it's a Fox property. It's yeah. a Fox property. And you, you see, Joe will agree with me on this, Albert. I want the next phase of Animal Kingdom to be a Planet of the Apes. Oh, interaction. Please. As long as they do the musical, it's all good. Yeah. Alan wants the Star Wars holiday special on Christmas. On, Me the too, entire buddy. thing is on YouTube in high quality, actually. Uh, but I would like it on Disney Plus as well. Lucas, that may have been one of the agreements because you heard <laughs> everything but Star Wars holiday special. Yeah. Favreau was so proud of himself with The Mandalorian because mm -hmm. they had the lightning rod yes. gun that had that boba fett had shown up with and the animated mm -hmm. part of the star wars holiday special mm -hmm. lucas came to the set and favreau runs up to him with that gun and he's like look seeing lucas is like yeah and goes <laughs> <laughs> lucas does not care for the holiday special lucas the, is, the masters to that is what, what the deal is yeah he, he wants to yeah. he's often said he wants to set him on fire or uh, but but the thing is, that was the second ever Star Wars thing. Yes. For archivists' sake. Yes, it was. I want a good version of it out there where people can see it. And I am not necessarily saying it's a super high-quality production. I'm saying you have to watch well, it's, it. It's absolutely it's, miserable. The first 20 minutes of it is nothing but Wookiee speak without translation. No, that's yeah. great. That's it. I am. I, I. I. will defend that thing to my dying breath. You, you have art. to watch it. 
Yeah, you have to watch it with a crowd of people. That's, I, I'm, I'm going to say one more thing, and then we're about to hit time, so we're going to have to leave out. But um, uh, <laughs> B. Well, Arthur, yeah, let's uh, not end it with the holiday special. But go well, ahead. but well, no, this is it. Uh, B. Arthur's character is canon. <laughs> Yep. Never did that. I, I can't speak for Harvey Corman's character, but B. Arthur, uh, so far as uh, the Moss Eisley Cantina, Moss Eisley's owned by a Wookiee of all things, but she is, she was one of the barkeeps there. She is referenced in, I think, a certain point of view. So she is Star Muh. Wars canon. The Look writer of certain point of view. No, yeah. thank you. Yeah, Muh. there you go. You were Guys, doing the you were doing the 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 the, the geeks work right that's there. exactly that's exactly right thank you everybody for joining us and of course thank you hoover library for having us joe plug yourself real quick um uh facebook um uh, and uh, instagram yourself, uh, joe. <laughs> <laughs> everybody wishes i could uh the instagram and uh twitter i'm at yo joe crow i'm a freelance writer i um, go go to go to Dragon Con's American Sci-Fi Classics track. I run that stuff. We do fun stuff like this that we're doing now. We do that all the time, and good stuff. I'm Stan Daniel and Albert Marsh, my buddy here. We do Kingdom Casts podcast, which is about comic books and anything else that we get bored enough to find and talk about. And Albert complains about Star Wars a lot too. So. Join us there. Again, thank you, Kristen. Thank you, Hoover Library. We enjoyed it greatly. And uh, Joe, I'll see you in 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye. Have a good night.